Hello, lovely learners. Welcome back to A Life Learned. I thought I'd share today what it was like to go through that PTSD study that I was partaking in uh, at the end of last year. It actually concluded uh, as in like the final time that I went in for blood tests and for like the final, what did you think of this, um, was March 7th and I was in the middle of taking that break on my channel. So hence why well, I hadn't released about this yet, but figured some of you might still be curious about how that was for me, so I figured I'd share. Um, so as a reminder for anyone uh, who forgot or wasn't around at the time that I first mentioned this, it was um, called the SKY program, um, which stands for Sudarshan Kriya Yoga Breathing Exercises Program. Um, it falls underneath uh, what is called the Art of Living Foundation, um, I will try to leave some links below for you guys to check out yourselves. Um, my first impression of the program was sort of mixed because uh, I thought, you know, this is a really cool way to approach treating PTSD uh, symptoms. It's not meds. Um, it's, it's working with your body and breathing and uh, meditation in a sense, which uh, just sounds so much better for your health overall than taking a pill. Um, so I really like the idea of that, but uh, when I first was introduced to it, I understood that you could only access it through paying, um, and I was only accessing it via the hospital, paying for myself and the other test people in order to do the um, study. And uh, for, by the way, it was a, a feasibility study. So like, it wasn't a very big study. It was literally just, is, is this feasible to further study or not? And I have no idea what they concluded, by the way. <laughs> I think I could call in and find out, which I might, but I'm not sure. I do know that um, in terms of my experience, it didn't, it didn't seem super successful on the test because three or four at least half, I think, of the people who first initially started didn't finish it. There was, in the end, only two other people and myself um, who made it to almost every single one. I think, did I miss one? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I went to every single one. Um, which required me busing out to the other end of the city. I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> and an unfortunate other issue that I did have with it was um, the people the trainers, I guess you could call them, or what have you, the people who run it, are, uh, were somewhat privileged. They weren't like, how do you say, pretentious or overly full of themselves kind of um, privileged, but they certainly did appear to be people who hadn't been through at least the type of poverty I have faced or um, some of the situations I have faced in life. And so, or a particularly chronic illness and chronic pain. Um, so the ways that they approach certain things was, it sort of rubbed me the wrong way. And so the experience of the whole thing was a little bit off put by the fact that I didn't really like the people who were running it, but that's just me. The program itself seemed really good. Um, initially when I first started it, I was in a really, really bad place with my court experience. Um, and it, it pulled me up out of a depression that was, uh, I would say, pretty dangerous for me. So that is really cool. And in that sense, I do recommend giving it a try. Um, if you can find uh, a local group, because they are actually all over the world, um, I would really suggest looking in to see if you can participate in it. Um, it is apparently... <clears throat> an exercise that you can hurt yourself with if you're not shown how to properly do it. So they don't advise um, that other people teach people. You're supposed to be specially trained. It seems a little silly because most of the practices are really simple, <clears throat> but they even went so far as to make a sign paperwork that we would not teach others. I thought that was a money grab at first, which sort of upset me. But um, towards the end of the study, I came to find that they do have like a money option because they're trying to support themselves, but they also were running a group that was completely free, you know, pay what you want if you want, otherwise it's free sort of thing, um, separately and just uh, with a public poll from Facebook, just letting people know about it. And so I thought that was actually pretty cool 
that, um, you know, if you didn't have money, as long as you can get out to the other end of the city, you could still participate, which was, um, it, it gave me a better feeling about the program and the people because I was really frustrated by the pay gate. Although I respect, you know, you got to feed yourself at the same time when it's such an incredible resource that could change people's lives and you're putting a pay gate on it. It's just, it's frustrating as someone in poverty. <laughs> but anyways, um, to get into how the actual study was, there were, I believe, three main exercises um, that we learned. And I didn't find all of them helpful. I'm not actually doing the practices anymore. I fell out of routine with them because of sort of how bad my depression was getting um, with my court stuff. And, and just keeping up with self-care is probably one of the most challenging things uh, when you're dealing with mental health struggles. So it's fallen out of my routine, but I did genuinely feel benefit from it. And I do want to get it back into my routine, particularly just because there's lots of writings and studies that say that uh, meditation is like, excellent for your mental health and can actually like change your brain in a positive way if you do it consistently. And this Sudarshan Kriya yoga breathing is um, a way to get your uh, I, I've come to find a way to get your physical body into a state where meditation is much more possible. And uh, they do end the breathing with like uh, 20 or 30 minutes of just sort of silent sitting meditation in a sense. So um, yeah, that's just really good for mind and body overall and particularly awesome for PTSD. But as I mentioned, a lot of people ended up leaving the study, some of them due to illness, others due to physical uh, inability because you have to do certain positions and they're like hard on the shoulders. And um, others left due to being um, more on the hyper side of vigilance rather than the hypo side. And so what they came to find is that if you're more hyper vigilant type, um, the breathing tends to put you more into that state um, and it can be very uncomfortable and overwhelming and overstimulating. Um, in my case, I'm more hypovigilant, um, so like less stimulated. So it brought me up sort of back into a normal zone a bit more. So it was great for me, but it's really individual in terms of how it works. And it's very much like I was saying, whether you're hypo or hyper uh, vigilant will definitely impact your overall experience. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate that some people found it more upsetting in the end, like it was, it stirred them up too much. But um, I think even hypervigilant people can benefit from it if they get to a good place in their therapy. So just sort of depends person for person. You got to, you got to take it in terms of, um, you know, what's working for you and what you're feeling about it. If you're feeling overwhelmed, don't push yourself is sort of what they kept saying. Um, that's not the idea. <laughs> so it was, it was interesting to uh, give my opinion at the very end because I was basically like, yeah, so I don't practice it anymore. So I can't like be a helpful part of the study in that sense. But from my overall experience, I do want to work it back into my routine. I'm slowly rebuilding my self-care since um, getting out of my court experience and finally actually truly starting to recover. And, uh, and I want to incorporate it into my self-care routine uh, for the day soon. Um, that's my plan. I've got myself back into stretching um, and, and doing other things for my chronic pain and, and eating a bit more regularly. So I'm going to hopefully get myself into doing that breathing as well. And um, fingers crossed it helps me out because like I was saying, uh, meditation is supposed to be really good. But overall, um, I just want to, I guess, say that it was a really cool experience being able to be part of a PTSD study because I knew or I felt that I was helping not just myself but anyone else or others in London with PTSD um, by possibly offering encouragement to further this program because like I said it was covered by OHIP and there's a good chance that there would be eventually a program covered by OHIP with people who are referred to it um, there are currently programs within the library, or library, excuse me, hospital um, for PTSD um, and for different types of treatment. They've removed several programs that I used or went through that were really helpful, which is sad, but 
that's funding for you. Um, but obviously, if they're they're studying this with the university, they're looking at making it a program. So that's really promising and that's cool because um, because of just how much they push pills on me. I mean, um, if you're not familiar, I've done a video about pharmacophobia and um, there's not a whole lot understood about the condition, so I can't even definitively really say if that's exactly what I have. But I, I have a very high fear of the side effects of medications, which makes me rather deal with my symptoms of my mental illness than the possible side effects of those pills. And so an option like this, where you're not introducing new chemicals into your body, you're just working with air and like your brain and things that are already existing amongst you, it just feels so much safer. Um, but you do experience a, a real change in your body uh, if you do it right, because it changes your stress levels and your um, just your overall mental state. I don't know how else to say it. You dissociate less. Um, my uh, hyperhidrosis from anxiety maximized like huge because it put me up into a more hypervigilant state. Um, but it's thought that if you're consistent with it for a long period of time, you get yourself into a state where it basically is regulating. It's calming. It's like, um, what did the instructor say? Um, in the same way that you um, eat right and wash your body, it's, it's like um, maintaining your brain, in a sense, like washing your brain um, or giving it a good shake and letting things settle. I, I don't know how else to properly describe it, but it's just um, when you spend time constantly thinking about what's going on around you, about what you're stressed about, about what you need to do, um, your neurons really seem to get into this like ball, this knot that affects your emotional state, which stresses you. And when you're constantly stressed, that starts causing you all kinds of different illnesses. Stress is a friggin' killer. And so that alone, I think, is proof of just how effective this Sudarshan Kriya breathing exercises can be. Um, but yeah, it's really different person to person. So I guess we'll see if they end up going any further with it. If I hear anything about them actually making it a program, I will be sure to share with you guys about that. But otherwise, I do suggest you check it out yourself. Um, as I was saying, it is the uh, art. Is it going to focus? No, it's not going to focus. Come on, camera. Well, anyways, it, art of living <laughs> um, is what it's called and is the program. Um, and they just have different instructors, I think, throughout um, North America and India. I'm not sure about other areas of the world, um, but you can definitely look it up on their website or Google it. And if you're dealing with PTSD or anxiety or any type of high stress situation or mental health dis dysregulation at all, even depression, I would say, um, this can be really helpful, but only if you're in a particular state like you if you're too vulnerable uh, it can be very very upsetting and make things worse so you have to be at a certain stage of healing though at the same time I've definitely been feeling super stagnant about my healing um, and what to do next still being involved with the court case was a huge part because I was still basically being traumatized putting that aside though um, I just felt like nothing else was really everything else I tried uh, had had its impact and I needed more and so this is an option to consider before taking medication. So I definitely suggest looking it up if you're someone with any struggle at all that you could use a little help with. And uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know about how the experience was, please feel free to comment that below. Or uh, if you've ever been part of any kind of mental health study or health study at all, uh, please feel free to share that below and how that experience was for you. I know for myself it was... Uh, didn't really know what to expect, and um, although there were some social struggles, overall it was pretty nifty to feel like I was contributing to the community just by getting a little help myself. Um, so yeah, cool experience overall. And uh, I, I do suggest being open-minded to new ways of healing like that if you ever do find yourself in those opportunities. 
So anyways, uh, yeah, feel free to comment below if you have anything to relate about this. And as always, do join me again next week where I try again to share a little something I've learned or experienced in life.